Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new to me, my name is Lauren and I am healing my chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue by healing old emotional wounds from my past, from my early life and past lives I've recently discovered. And I'm sharing on this channel how I'm doing this. So many times I see information that is in retrospect about how to heal and sort of lessons in the past. You know, people who have already been on the healing journey, they've done it and they sort of whiz over the fact that, oh yeah, you need to heal, you need to do all the past work healing before you can go on and find your spiritual purpose or whatever it is. I hear people gloss over this all the time and there's nothing wrong with that. That's not their, their, their job is not to teach us. But what I want to provide on this channel is the process of really how to do it while I'm doing it. So I am doing this with you. I am, if you are embarking on this journey, I am doing it with you. If you are looking to heal emotional wounds from your past, from your early life that you might not remember what they are, what the wounds are, you might not be able to identify, you might not be able to be, you're not conscious at this point of what the wounds are, where they came from. So if you don't know those things, how do you heal it? And then the next step after identifying them and finding them and figuring out where they came from is to heal it. And I am providing the most simple, straightforward methods I am finding on my own journey for you so that your process can go faster and can be less painful, that you can have less fight energy than I did on my journey. I mean, that's one of the big lessons that I've learned on this journey is to stop fighting it. But it's easier said than done to stop fighting the process of healing the th waves the energy waves the emotional waves that come up through you as you're healing as you heal when you heal something then something a few weeks later a few days whatever it is a few months something else is going to come up and to not fight that energy but see when we have defenses from our childhood <laughs> that we're not conscious of. We don't realize we're doing this. We don't realize that we're coming to the world with this fight energy. I certainly didn't. It's taken me months to figure that out. So I'm trying, I am sharing my journey with you to help your journey go faster and easier and less painful. So here we go. So today I want to do sort of a quick video on one lesson that's really important. One thing that I've learned, a tool kind of, that I've learned is essential. So in this process of healing emotional wounds, we, let's, let's just say you and I have old emotional wounds. And I mean, we all do. Unless you've gone back and healed it already, you have emotional wounds from your early life. It just, particularly if you're a highly sensitive person or an empath, you just, but really all of us, we really can't get through childhood unscathed at all. There's something that they're for, there for all of us to heal. Okay, so we have emotional wounds, but we don't know how we're experiencing it. I mean, what, or we don't know what they are. How do we even know that we have them? Well, if you have areas of your life that are perpetually, habitually, something is difficult, it's blocked, something you just try and you try and you try and you don't, and it doesn't work. For the purposes of this channel, I'm going to talk about this area as being health. Because if you have chronic fatigue or adrenal fatigue and you are still searching answers, you have not found the answer. If you're on this channel, my guess is that you haven't found answers in different in another place. That was the case for me. I looked everywhere else. I felt like I looked everywhere else. I looked a lot of places for a long time for answers. I mean, had chronic fatigue for a decade. And I was looking and looking for answers, but it, I mean, it took me a while to even identify that I had chronic fatigue. It took me about eight years to identify that that's what the illness was. Fatigue was this common thread, but I had all these other things going on that it just confused the heck out of me. I just like, it was like, I thought there were, I had a bunch of separate illnesses. I couldn't figure it out. So if you have chronic fatigue or adrenal fatigue, chances are you've been lurking and searching and searching for many years for a long time and so you've had this 
chronic health issue that you just can't figure out what the heck is going on with my body. Why is it breaking down? Why am I fatigued all the time? Why can't I do anything? Why can't I eat anything without repercussions? Why can't I think properly? Why, why, why? What is it? If you think that your answers are emotional or energetic in some capacity, some component of your illness is energetic and emotional and emotional emotional is just a type of the energetic body that I'm talking about emotions are kind of sort of our connection to our energetic body that's how I think of it so if you think that those that's part of it then you want to start identifying what are those what what is the energy what are the energetic blocks that I have what are the emotional blocks that I have what are the what are the emotional wounds that are causing energetic blocks why can't I manifest? Why can't I manifest health? Why can't I manifest something else in my life? Whatever it is that you're seeking and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried and you haven't found it. So the answers very likely are in your early, if you don't have memories of something really big happening, if you don't have memories of a distinct trauma, but you have this internal sense of uh, disconnection, unrest, lack of peace. There's always some, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of turmoil, a little bit of uneasiness. You just never can feel settled on in your inner being. Chances are you have emotional wounds from your early life, from those foundational years when you were creating your root chakra and your lower chakras. If you have early life wounds, that happened before the age of three, which is really what's thought of as, you know, pre-memory because we don't create these formed memories. If you th have, think you have memories before the age of three, they're very, they're very cloudy. They're very non-distinct. They're very um, amorphous. They're, they're hard to reach. Even four and five, but it gets a little easier. You get things, memories get clearer and clearer, assuming that you don't have some sort of um, dissociation, disconnection that's keeping your memories at bay. But in general, we mostly don't have many, we really don't have many memories from before the age of three. And so those are the, those are the formative years when we are creating a sense of safety and love and learning interpersonal dynamics, how to relate to the world, how to relate to ourselves, how we receive love, what love is available to us, how safe is our environment? These are the years that we are really figuring this out. We're absorbing all this, we're downloading all this information. Our brains up to the age of seven are in beta brain waves in which we are just accumulate. We're just downloading, we're in a download, we're a constant download of information. It's seeping in. It's so everything that we come across in our environment seeps in in some way. So what is most prominent in those early years of what we're seeping in is our really our home environment. What is our home environment like? And those are family dynamics, but what we are all wired to look to are our primary caregivers. For most of the us, that's going to be our parents. And so what the thing that the area that can is really tricky, the hardest, but most common area of having some trauma or wounding and any kind of wounding is around is with our attachment figures, because our parents don't always, whether however much they love us, they aren't always capable of giving us exactly what we need when we need it. And children are extremely resilient. But a lot of times because of, you know, the way our culture functions, we're not taught to heal these wounds before having children. And so a lot of us are going around with old wounds that are, we are unconscious of. And then we have children and we unconsciously pass those wounds along. And there's, we don't want to, we don't mean to, but we're just not conscious of the fact that we even have them and how to heal them to not pass them on. Even if we're conscious that we have them, it's still, if you don't heal them, it's still hard to not pass them along. I'm trying to explain the, the difficult position it is. How difficult, so if you have early wounds that are, how, how important it is 
because it's those foundational years we're, we're forming our our ideas and our our way of being in the world and if we have wounding there it sets a foundation for the rest of our lives and it can impact our lives in ways that we that are apps that are pervasive that could cause so much pain and so much suffering if we don't go back and heal the wounds first find the wounds but then heal the wounds one of the things that it can cause particularly for highly sensitive people and empaths is our chronic illnesses particularly the ones i'm talking about are ones that involve a chronic fatigue set of symptoms of some kind you know i i usually talk about chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue because that's what i have but i really believe that this can apply to any kind any illness that has chronic fatigue as a component so fibromyalgia things like that but again i'll focus on chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue so this is another way that these wounds can manifest in your life and block you because we all know if you if you have this illness you and i know that when you have an illness that manifests as a as, as chronic fatigue as perpetual fatigue debilitating fatigue so many avenues in your life are blocked now what i believe is what that really is in another sense is that your soul is putting your the universe is putting these blocks up to show you that this that these are the things that need to heal showing you that there's something here that needs to heal you see that you hear that you're hearing this message and you're like well how the heck do i identify those things lauren you said i don't even remember them they're before the age of three yeah so how do you do that it takes some digging but the gift the gift of this illness of chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue is that it has a whole set of symptoms that can lead you in the direction of your wounds. So one of the first things that you can do is start looking at the location of your symptoms. One of the, one of the most helpful tools for me was to learn the chakras, to learn what each chakra represents and what it sort of controls what is associated with in the body. So for example, the root chakra. The root chakra is about safety, feeling safe in the world, feeling safe in your body, having strength, feeling secure, feeling sturdy, feeling stable, feeling grounded. This can also come up. I mean, this issues around money can come up, but really health any health issue has root chakra wounds involved in it because there's this element of you are no longer safe in your body that's sort of that's the sort of the, the experience you, you you get the 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 experience of the illness is sort of that belief or that wound being manifested because suddenly with this illness there's some truth to it you're no longer safe in your body but it's because it, it it's in some ways as a result of the wound that you have had in your root chakra and has been working in your life to uh, to pull in more energy to embed that wound even more <laughs> in some ways any kind of health issue you pretty much know any kind of chronic health issue you pretty much know that there's a root chakra wound there another thing that i've so i've learned is associated with the root chakra is muscles if you have problems with your muscles that is an indication that you might have root chakra wounds now fatigue for me screams that <laughs> it screams that it's like your muscles are weak they've become weak they can't hold it's almost it's, it's so difficult to just hold your body up that's an example of a root chakra wound sacral chakra wounds and i've said before and i'll say it again that most trauma and and old wounds that are harming you in a profound way especially associated with this illness most trauma is stored in the first in the first two chakras so the root chakra and then the sacral chakra the sacral chakra is all about interpersonal relationships relationships with others relationships with the relationship with yourself which 
is probably the one that's that is absolutely the one that is most important and probably the most the one that is most prominent in this illness wounding to your relationship to yourself because of wounds that came from the relationship with your caregivers primary caregivers when you were small it's also about the way you relate to the world at large some indicators of some some things that i've discovered as part of this illness some symptoms that can be associated with sacral chakra issues is anything that has to do with water so fluid retention lymph stagnation anything that has to do with blood sweat for example i stopped sweating when i developed this illness i just I couldn't sweat. I, I, it took so much heat to get me to sweat at all. And I don't know if this is true for you, but anything that's involved with the fluids of your body, but also hormones, hormones though, that, cause that is the area that your sexual organs are, especially as a, a, a woman, you've got your uterus and your ovaries and your fallopian tubes and all of the things, all the ingredients, the womanly ingredients in there. <laughs> That produce the hormones that we need to sustain a healthy female body so you might experience menstrual changes hormonal changes hormonal issues that can relate directly to thyroid and then we've got the solar plexus chakra which plays a major part i have found plays a major part in this illness because it's all about agency and power and I have found that a really core piece of this illness revolves around powerlessness and helplessness. So a wound around powerlessness and helplessness. Now that also relates to the root chakra. The emotion that I have found that relates for the manifestation of this illness for me, one of the core wounds that, that is associated with my sacral chakra, the second chakra, with all about interpersonal dynamics, is shame. And there is pain about unreceived love there. And as a result, there was a, there was a shame wound. And in my solar plexus, there are major powerlessness, helplessness wounds, feeling powerlessness and helpless unconsciously. In terms of the root chakra, it's really been, it's like a theme of lack of safety, but it's unconscious. When you have these wounds from before you were three, you you have lived your entire life with these wounds you're just used to it so it doesn't see it doesn't feel like you feel unsafe it doesn't seem like you feel unsafe walking around in the world i you, you think you feel safe but when you start to dig into this stuff you start seeing more and more and more but so that is sort of the first step to sort of identify identify what chakras are involved heart chakra wounds any symptoms that are around the heart, the breast, the shoulders, the arms, any symptoms or and even just emotional behavioral symptoms that aren't that you don't necessarily associate with your illness. You can start just thinking about all the all the wounds, all and all the symptoms that you've had over the years and where they are in your body and what chakra they might correlate to. I've talked about the throat chakra with um, thyroid issues, but and also um, jaw issues. It can be associated with hearing issues because it's about speaking your truth and speaking and standing up for yourself and being your authentic self. Your third eye can manifest symptoms like brain fog, like chronic migraines, chronic headaches. You know, this is so, this is a really important step in my opinion. And if you believe that you have energetic wounds, emotional wounds that are contributing to your illness, this is a really, this is a really useful way to start thinking about your symptoms, start thinking about your illness, is how can I sort of separate and identify where do I have wounds to my chakras? Because what chakras are, are balls of energy. They're, we are energetic beings and all of our systems require energy to function. So if our energy centers, are off they're wounded they're not working quite right they're not cycling in the way that they need to cycle they're not producing the energy and keeping the energy flowing and moving the way that it needs to function to have vitality and to create vitality 
and physical energy in the body and health and vitality that we all want, that's when it impacts the, the, our body's health, our health, the health of our bodies. And so you start to identify what chakras are the ones that have wounds. Now, a little comp complexity here is that when you have wounds in your lower three chakras and your lower, particularly your lower two chakras, they influence all the rest of your chakras because you form them in order when you're a child. So you form your first one first, second one second, third one third. And so if you have wounds in your first chakra, then the, in, during the formation of all the other chakras, it's going to create some wounding in the others as well. But in order to heal it, you can work in that same direction because once you heal, when you heal the ones that are in your root and sacral chakras, that those are the, such the core, core wounds. When you focus on those, the other ones are not as hard. The bottom three ones, when you heal the wounds in the bottom three chakras, it's not that difficult to heal the rest of them once you heal. But if you try to heal the ones from like top down or something, or you, you go to your heart first and you try to, you keep trying to open your heart, open your heart, open your heart, open your heart and heal your heart chakra wounds. But you've got all these other wounds in your bottom three chakras. You're not going to have much success. It'll, it'll open and then it'll close and you'll, you'll just keep, you'll per, be perpetually working to open your heart chakra and it's going to be key. It's going to continue to close or when you open it, you get significant, you get wounded because you've got these wounds in your lower chakras that you haven't healed yet. So I highly recommend healing the, the, the base chakras first to really just go down to the center and the core of where those original traumas and wounds are held. And that's where. So a really important shift in your consciousness is to start thinking about your illness in terms of foundational chakras, the bottom chakra wounds. Really start to play with this idea and think about what could it be. So one thing that I think is really important to mention here, because I've heard this thing again and again, ugh, it's pervasive. It's whenever you learn about the chakras, and I would highly recommend going and studying the chakras. When you're embarking on this healing journey work, this, he this emotional healing, inner healing, inner child healing, and your inner child lives in the bottom two chakras, by the way. When you're going on this journey of healing, it's, it's, it was a great idea to go and study the chakras, to understand more of what I'm saying so that you can start associating your symptoms and what, and what you're going through and the illness itself as wounds to those chakras, to each of the chakras, but particularly paying close attention to the first two. But I will say that one thing that has frustrated me a little bit is that what you hear is this very concrete separation of each one. And I just did it a little bit. I mean, I just separated. It's easier to conceptualize if you just think of the root chakra, then the sacral chakra, then the solar plexus chakra, then the heart. And, you know, so you just you, you think of them as these confined, just distinct, discrete balls of energy. And they only are about these certain things. But like many things in life, it's not that simple. And the reality is that all of the chakras intertwine and are interconnected. They all, and I spoke to this a little bit about how they're formed and that the, the wounds that happen in the, in the base chakras, you know, come up as the others form, but it's, it's even more complicated than that because they're always working and communicating with each other. And so when you have a wound, so let's say you have a wound with one of your caregivers around shame, and then you've identified that shame, for example, have I've identified that shame is all about my sacral chakra and that it's connected to my lymph, it's connected to my water retention, it's connected to, you know, salt <laughs> and my, di my lower digestion, the digestion in my lower digestive tract, my hormones, all that st sacral chakra stuff. But there's more to it than that. It also embeds, it has embedded information in my solar plexus. It has embedded information in my root chakra because the interpersonal, so the, the thing about shame is that it's all, the shame is from an interpersonal dynamic. 
and it is turning that dynamic, the wound from that dynamic onto yourself. Pointing, redirecting it so that it's not that my caregiver is unsafe, it's that I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, there's something flawed about me. So that is a turning in on yourself. Well, so that's inter that's interpersonal. That is your relationship with yourself. That sacral that sacral chakra, right? But it also has these dynamics of mixed in, and a key part of it is our root chakra wounds of not feeling safe, not feeling safe in your in that interpersonal dynamic, not feeling secure and securely loved and safe and safe and held and secure. And you, it also has dynamics in your solar plexus that it creates, you know, shame has this core element of rage and powerlessness, which is a solar plexus energy. So I hope I'm explaining well how these chakras intermingle like this. But to start with, start with the core energies of each, but just have in mind that they do intertwine, they do interlink, and there are pieces from each from other chakras that might help in understanding the story of what, where these wounds came from. Because I, I have heard so many spiritual teachers and energetic teachers talk about how you, you don't focus on the story. You don't focus on the story of your life. You, 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 the, you focus on the emotion and the release, but you, it's, how, it's learning how to let go of your story. And that is true. When you are trying to heal, Inner, inner healing comes from letting go of your story. But what is not so often not talked about is that you can't just let go. You can't let go of your story until you have healed your story. I want you to hear me on this because you, if you get into this work, you might start hearing this and it is, it can be confusing and discombobulating. This idea that you don't want to, you don't want to focus on your story. You want to let that go. Let your story go and just stay in the emotion of it, but don't go into your story. That is, it's not representational of what truly needs to happen in healing. In order to heal, what actually needs to happen is you need to go deep into your story to heal your story. And once you've healed the aspects of your story that have caused significant emotional wounds, that's when you can let your story go. And that is sort of a closing and ending phase of the healing of, the, of any particular wound or any particular part of your life story. Of course, a yes, the ultimate goal is to let it go. All the emotional wounds. But understand that you have to go into the wound. You have to go into the wound in order to heal the wound. And you cannot let anything go until you heal it. Letting go is not a process. Letting go is not a, an action that you just have to learn how to let stuff go. No. You have to learn how to heal it. You have to learn how to heal that thing. And when you heal that thing, letting go is a natural process. It just happens. You don't have to think about it. If you're struggling with it, there's something... If you're trying to force let go, just just let go, just let go, let go, let go. Well, can I just let this go? There's something there that you have to heal and maybe that you have to learn. Maybe there's a gift in that pain that you have to find. Or maybe you need to go inside and heal that, that the part of your inner child that is still hurting. Maybe you need to start taking action that is repair that repairs that wound. If you've already worked to heal the wound, maybe you need to start taking actions that are actually going to heal that wound in an, in an action-oriented way. So solar plexus energy really requires action. They all do. But particularly solar plexus because that is that action-oriented chakra. So we just want to make that clear because I, I've been confused by it so many times and I've found again and again and again, you must go into the wound and it, to go into the wound to heal the wound, to understand the wound, to conceptualize the wound in order to heal it, to really, to really envelop it and get in there and feel it in order to feel it. You do, you have to go into your story to figure out where this came from, what it is and why. And it's not about blaming. It's not about finding a person to blame, a thing, an experience to blame. It's not about that. It's about making sense of it. How can I make sense of this wound so that you can understand? Because your brain is an important part of this process. 
You need to, you need, it's about connection, connecting your brain back to your body. And so connecting the body symptoms, the body wounds, what your body is telling you you have, where you have wounds and what wounds you have, connecting them to your brain, your conceptual, your intellectual being to understand what it is. And when you understand it, it helps, it helps draw out the energy of the emotion. And then when you can touch the emotion, when you can feel it, that's when you can heal it. And once you can heal it, that's when you can let it go. And you can let go of that aspect of your story. If once you have fully healed an aspect of your story, you can let it go easily, but not before then. So I just wanted to make that note at the end, but I really encourage you to start doing this. Start with the, the chakra work, learning about the chakras, what each one represents, what aspects of the body, what processes in the body, each one sort of rules, and then start to figure out, start to think about how is this illness? If, if my illness was a manifestation of a bunch of old wounds, old wounds from our past, then where are the wounds? Where are the wounds rooted in my body? Where do they start? Where's the origin of the symptom? Because we all have lots of symptoms. When we get to chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue, we have lots of symptoms. And so you might have a long list. I encourage you to write it down. Write down each symptom and work to associate it with it with a chakra. Okay, that's this is a really important exercise. I would encourage you to do. So, if, so if you have a chance right now, go do it. If you don't know about the chakras, first learn about the chakras, then work to identify the symptoms, which symptoms are correlated with which, and try to think of different aspects of each symptom. What could they mean? What could they be about? Could having weakness be about powerlessness? Could it be about helplessness? Could it be about feeling unstable, unsafe in my body or my life? You know, try to think about ways that multiple ways, and it doesn't have matter if they're right, just start writing down ideas. Because as you go through this journey, things are going to shift, things are going to resonate more than others, and you will be able to start to identify what is true for you, what is truly going on in your body with this illness. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. I hope you do this exercise because it is really, it was really pivotal. It's really important. It just helps so much conceptualize and understand the illnesses and understand how wounds can create illness in the body. And it's because they affect, they impact the energy centers of the body. And our body can't work without the energy centers. We can't work without energy moving and flowing and creating and being used and just, you know, keep that circuit going. So the process really is about how to re-establish, restart, speed up, accelerate, and make these chakras alive and humming again. That's what creates vital health. So Please do this exercise. I really encourage you, even if, you're, if you've already thought about it, go do it again because you might have a different perspective than another time that you've done it. And writing it down really makes a difference and you can always go back to it later. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you on the next video. Take care.